Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to brighten up just the main subject in your compositions using GIMP. I'll also be showing you how to make some adjustments to your main subject as well. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.30 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. <laughs> Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. This is using a free photo from pexels.com. So you can download this photo and then drag and drop it right here into GIMP or in my case, I'll go to File, Open Recent, and select the photo. I'm just going to convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space. So once you have your photo opened up, I've got my Layers panel over here on the right, and I have the Paths tab below here, so they're both displaying. Oftentimes, you'll have the Paths tab up here. But inside the Layers panel, I'm going to click on the name of this and rename it Original. And then I'll duplicate this, and I'm going to rename this brightened, copy, and hit the enter key. So now we have two versions of the original photo. And working on the brightened copy, we're gonna start this off by brightening the exposure of our image. And I can do that by going to Colors, Exposure. So I'm going to drag the exposure slider up. This is going to be in stops, so you have you know one stop, two stop. Usually when you go above one stop, that's when you start to get problems with the image. You'll start to see noise, you'll start to see some overblown highlights, etc. So I'm going to go just right up to 1.0 stops. If you have more wiggle room on that, feel free to keep going. The black level we don't need to adjust, that's just going to flatten out the image if I drag it one way. It will give it a little bit of contrast, sort of, if I drag it the other way. But I'm just going to keep this set to zero. So I can do that by middle clicking my mouse on there and set that to zero. I'll click OK. So already our photo is brightened up, but we only want the subject to be brightened up. So what I'll do is hit the B key on my keyboard to grab the paths tool. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the paths tool and I cover it in more depth in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass. But I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel and what I can do is just click and drag my mouse and that's creating points and curves here and what I want to do is stay inside the outer pixels so you can see the pixels for our subject skin sort of blend in with the pixels from the background so you don't want to try to go right up to the edge of those because you'll start to see parts of the background shining through there and really we just want to have the photo of the uh, model there or the pixels from the model showing up so you're going to stay a little bit inside those outermost pixels for the model and you're just going to go all the way around here and make sure you outline her. So I'm not going to go through all that. I've done this ahead of time. So what I'll do is come over to the original and in the Paths tab I'm going to right click on that path and go to Copy Path. Come over here. We can delete this path. Right click and go to Paste Path. So now I can unhide that and you can see we have a finished path there. And something I do want to point out is I did not select her hair. I just left that out for now. We're going to select that momentarily. I'm going to use an easier method for that. So once my path is finished, I'm going to come over here to the Paths tab and convert the path to a selection. There you can see my selection. I can hide my path. And now what I'll do is come over to the Brightened Copy Layer and I'm going to click the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layers panel. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection and click add. So that's going to mask out everything that was brightened in the background so that only the subject is brightened. I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. Hit the P key on my keyboard to grab my paintbrush tool. And we're going to come over here, make sure our color is set to white. The size is a pretty large size here, 275. The hardness I have turned down pretty low to around 23. If you're using a smaller image, by the way, the 275 size brush might look a lot larger on your computer screen. 
So just shrink it down if you are using a smaller image. But now I'll hold control, zoom in with my mouse wheel, and I'm just gonna paint using the edges of my paintbrush. So these are gonna be the fuzzy or soft edges of my paintbrush. So you wanna keep a little bit of distance there between the center of the paintbrush and the hair that you're painting. And that's gonna give this a nice smooth transition to the hair. And we'll do the same up top here. You can see that line is going to slowly disappear as we just wiggle our mouse. All right, so that looks pretty good. It's not gonna be perfect, it's okay, it's not heart surgery. I'll hit Control Shift J. So that is going to center us back up. So now let's come back over here to the Brighton Copy image. So clicking off of the layer mask there. Now let's make some adjustments to our image. I'm gonna start off by adjusting the color temperature of this. So I'll go to Colors, Color Temperature. And I'm just going to adjust the intended temperature. So if I bring that up, it's gonna make her warmer in appearance. So she's gonna look a little bit more orange. I just think right now she looks a little too uh, lifeless there, not enough colors going on. So brighten that up and I'll click okay. And now what I'll do is apply some color adjustments via the levels tool. So we'll go to colors, levels, I'm going to skip the value channel. That would just adjust like the brightness contrast. We don't need to do that right now. So let's come over to the red channel. And anytime you're adjusting the red channel, you're either adding cyan or you're adding red. And those colors offset each other. So more of one color offsets the other. In this case, I wanna add some red to this. So we're going to adjust these little nodes here so that we get some more red. And let's move on to the green channel. So the opposite of green is going to be magenta. So I wanna add some magenta to this without overdoing it. There's a before, there is an after. And let's go to the blue channel now. So there's not a whole lot of blues and yellows on here, which is what this is going to adjust. So we don't really need to do much with this channel. You can see too much yellow is gonna make her look kind of sickly. So we don't wanna do that. Maybe just a touch of blue there on the midtones. So maybe tweak the reds a little bit. I'm not gonna get too crazy with this. So that's gonna be good enough. So now I'll come over here and click OK. Once we've done that, we can rebalance the lighting a little bit to just help make it look better. And we'll do that by going to Colors, Shadows, Highlights. And I like to turn the highlights down first because this effect sort of uh, can blow out the highlight areas like right here around her cheeks. And now we've got too much shadows going on around here, so we're gonna increase the shadows to sort of counteract that. And that's going to balance this photo out. This filter I noticed is a little bit slower on the larger images, so it takes some time to see the changes as you are adjusting on here. You can always go with the split view. So let's get the highlights coming down a little bit more. And let's turn off the split view. And we can also increase the white point, which is basically just going to increase the brightness of this overall. And if you wanted to preserve your midtones, you can increase the compressed slider. And if you didn't want the effects kind of spilling out into various pixels throughout the image, you could increase or decrease the radius just to sort of make adjustments to that. But there's a before, there's an after, so I'll click OK. Finally, what I'll do is sharpen this. So I'll go to Filters, Enhance, Sharpen Unsharp Mask. This is a larger photo, so typically I like to increase the amount on larger photos. You don't want to overdo it, it's just going to look really bad. So it probably doesn't look as bad on video because it's going to be compressed a little bit, which means it's going to lose some of its sharpness anyway. Uh, but add a little bit more amount. You can also adjust the radius to your liking. So there's before, there's an after. Let's increase the amount a little bit more. And I'll click OK. 
All right, so there is our final composition. Coming over to the layers panel, there's a before. Very dark, the colors didn't look great. There's an after, looking much better now. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.